The Battle of Dransville was a small battle during the American Civil War that took place between Confederate forces under Brigadier General J. E. B. Stewart and Union forces under Brigadier General Edward O. C. Ord on December 20, 1861, in Fairfax County, Virginia, as part of Major General George B. McClellan's operations in Northern Virginia. The two forces on similar wintertime patrols encountered and engaged one another in the crossroads village of Dransville. The battle resulted in a Union victory. Background Following the Battle of Balls Bluff on October 21, major offensive action was halted in the Eastern Theater, as both armies went into winter quarters. Small detachments were still occasionally sent out to probe the enemy's position and to obtain forage. Such was the case early on the morning of December 20 when General Stewart, with a mixed brigade of infantry comprising the regiments of the 6th South Carolina, 1st Kentucky, 10th Alabama, and 11th Virginia, 150 of his cavalry troopers and Allen S. Cutts's four-gun Georgia battery, set out north from their position near Centerville to escort the Army's wagons trains on a foraging expedition into Loudoun County. Meanwhile, General Lord, leading the 10,000-strong 3rd Brigade of Pennsylvania Reserve set out west from Langley to clear the south bank of the Potomac River of Confederate pickets and partisans in Fairfax and Loudoun. At Colvin Run Mill, Ord left half his force to protect his rear and prevent his force from being cut off from their base at Langley. Opposing Forces Confederate Commander Brigadier General J. E. B. Stuart Regiment's 11th Virginia Volunteers Colonel Samuel Garland, Jr. 6th South Carolina Volunteers L.T. Colonel Secrest 10th Alabama Volunteers Colonel J. H. Borney 1st Kentucky Volunteers Colonel Thomas A. Taylor Sumter Flying Artillery Captain Allen S. Cutts 1st North Carolina Cavalry Major James B. Gordon 2nd Virginia Cavalry Company C. Captain Andrew L. Pitzer Union Commander Brigadier General Edward O. C. Ord Regiment 6th Infantry Pennsylvania Reserves Lieutenant Colonel William M. Penrose 9th Infantry Pennsylvania Reserves Colonel Conrad Feger Jackson 10th Infantry Pennsylvania Reserves Colonel John S. McCalmont 12th Infantry Pennsylvania Reserves Colonel John H. Taggartkin's 1st Pennsylvania Rifle Regiment Lieutenant Colonel Thomas L. Kane 1st Pennsylvania Reserve Cavalry Lieutenant Colonel Jacob C. Higgins Battery A, 1st Pennsylvania Reserve Artillery, Captain Hezekiah Easton Battery F, 1st Pennsylvania Light Artillery, Captain Ezra Matthews Battle. At about noon, Ord arrived at the intersection of the Georgetown Pike and Leesburg Pike in the village of Dransville, where he encountered Stewart's advance cavalry pickets, which were quickly driven off by the Union force. Ord then began to lead his command west down the Leesburg Pike. At around 1 p.m., Stuart, with the main body of his force approached Dransville from the south whereupon he encountered the rear of the Union detachment. Ord halted his infantry and wheeled it around to meet the Confederate threat, forming a line on the north side of the Leesburg Pike. He then deployed his artillery on an eminence near the intersection. Stuart deployed his infantry on the south side of the pike and his artillery 300 yards south of the Federal position. While the Confederate infantry was deploying, the 6th South Carolina mistook the 1st Kentucky for Union troops and opened fire, which was quickly returned by the Kentuckians. Hearing the sound of gunfire, the 9th Pennsylvania charged across the turnpike but were quickly driven back. The artillery then began to duel, but owing to the strength of the Union position, the Confederate guns were quickly knocked out. Or deployed his infantry in a skirmish line and sent it across the pike at Stuo and the two sides squared off for nearly two hours. At 3 p.m., with his wagons safely away and secure from capture, Stuart ordered a withdrawal. Ord pursued for a half mile, ensuring his line of retreat was safe, before breaking off the attack and returning to Langley. 
The following day Stuart returned with reinforcements, but found no Federals to engage. Results Though the battle was small, of no strategic importance and resulted in only light casualties, it marks the first time in the East that a Union force had bested their Confederate enemy, inflicting 230 casualties while suffering only 71, and was able to drive them from the field.